All right, welcome back. That was a that was a good burger. It was. Um, <laughs> For those of you that uh, weren't here two seconds ago alongside uh, John Galloway, I am uh, Christopher Harrison, and this is intro to uh, ASP.NET MVC. Um, and so in the last module, we sort of took a look at everything from about 30,000 feet mm -hmm. um, and kind of introduced the moving parts and, and sort of made the case for why MVC. Well, now what we want to do is we want to dig down just a little bit and start to examine uh, the different moving parts. And with MVC, it sort of makes sense to start with, you know, the, the letter M. Yep. So models. So let's get in and take a look at, uh, at what models are, uh, are all about. So what we want to do with, uh, with this module is talk, first of all, about what a model is, want to go in, create a model, and then start to talk a little bit about design of, uh, of models that probably the number one uh, running theme as far as questions go uh, in, uh, in the chat window right now is a lot on design. And keeping in mind that we do have an awful lot to try and cover uh, today, we're not going to be able to dig real deep into that, but there certainly is a few little um, things that we can highlight along the way. And that's really what that last section is going to give us an opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. is to go in and start to, uh, to highlight uh, all of that. But let's start off by talking about what a model is. Are you ready? Yes. Let's talk oh, about what a model is. Your question was for them or well, for me? Uh, it, it was mostly I'll rhetorical. answer for everybody. We Excellent. are so ready. You are so ready. That's good to hear. All right. So what is a model? Well, the model, would you believe, it's, it's a class. No? No, really. <laughs> Trust me. It's just a class. But, but. <laughs> I, I, I promise. It's just a class. Now, one of the things that I always like to highlight when it comes to MVC is it's sort of a, a Wizard of Oz type thing, that you've had the power the entire time. All you had to do is click your heels. That if, if you know how to create a class and you know how to add properties, Congratulations, you know how to create a model. It really is that straightforward. Now, obviously, there's certain things to be talked about when it comes to design of that. There's certain things to be talked about when it comes to adding on attributes and breathing additional life into the model. But at its most basic form, at its most simplest, at the end of the day, all that a model is, is it's just simply a class. So with that in mind, let's go in and take a look at how to add in a model. Now, one thing that I do want to highlight here real quick, and let me get my screen um, set up. There is uh, Visual Studio here is, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be using uh, GitHub for all of our uh, coding. And this is really actually done for two reasons. Number one is because it's going to make it very easy for John and I to be able to share code back and forth. It's let's just go ahead and push it up into the cloud, mm -hmm. and away we go from there. So um, I've actually just gone in. I've created the basic little project, and I've already uploaded it into, uh, into GitHub. And then later on, John's going to go ahead and connect and and download all of that. What that also means is that as we're doing our demos and as we check everything in, you'll be able to go grab the source files right away. Um, and John, you have the uh, the AKA MS uh, for that. Yes. Uh, let me see. It was AKA MS M <laughs> MVA MVC <laughs> source, I think. MBA dash. We'll work on that. Yes. Yeah, John, in the background, why don't you go ahead and, and figure right. out what that is? We will throw it up into the chat window yeah. um, and, uh, and make that available so that way you can download all of that. Trust me, we will give you guys the URL, I promise you. Um, we just need to go in and remember what it was. We, we did that real quick this morning, set up the, the little shortcut URL. Yeah. But in any event, let's go in and take a look at, uh, at my Visual Studio here. And uh, as promised, and I'm just going to move a couple of things around here uh, real quick. Um, but as promised, all that I've done, I haven't done anything special, is I've just gone in and created a basic MVC project. So I did exactly what John did. I haven't made any changes. You'll notice that if I uh, control F5 here, I launch this in the browser, you're going to notice chugga, chugga, chugga. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And poof. <laughs> poof. There we go. There we go. Uh, yay. Uh, so actually, this is a key thing. What was happening there while we were waiting? 
It was compiling, right? Exactly. I mean, it was, yeah, it, it was. It was doing yeah. some work there. It was going in and, and getting everything compiled and get everything, getting everything uh, all set up. So it just the, went the, in. The point is, if somebody's yeah. thinking that's going to, is my site going to be that? So oh, this is the compile right. you're running. And also, you're running in debug mode. So when you're running in debug mode, Visual Studio is doing some, and, and ASP.NET do some things differently. Exactly. To make it easier to step into your code and test what's going on and troubleshoot and all that. When yep. you run it, when you deploy your code to production, that's all done, I mean, that, that doesn't happen. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly, yep. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go back to uh, my little uh, Visual Studio here. And uh, you'll notice right over here that there is a uh, folder um, cleverly named models. What do you think goes into that folder? JavaScript. Close. <laughs> so obviously, this is the uh, this is the design. This is where our models are going to go. Now, one thing that I do want to highlight is MVC does an awful lot by convention, but if you don't like that convention for whatever reason, MVC always gives you the opportunity to fix that. But to quote John Galloway for the first of many many times uh, <laughs> today. It just works. And if you just follow the convention, it will just work. But I do want to highlight that with models, they don't have to exist inside this folder. And in fact, they don't even have to be part of this project. Mm -hmm. That models are completely nebulous. It's, it's completely up to you to decide what that data structure is. So if it's all in web services, hey, cool, go call web services. If you've maybe already created all your business objects and they were in a separate DLL, Cool, use those. So it's 100% up to you to decide what your models are going to look like and even where your models are going to be. So if they are being created for just this project, put them into the folder. But if you are wanting to use something that you've already created, feel free to go ahead and do that. So they technically don't need to be inside of that models folder. But of course, if you're creating it for just that project, put them inside of there. Speaking of models, we're getting a lot of comments in the chat about your shirt, and they think that you are actually a high fashion model as well. So, <laughs> just wanted to point that out. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So well done. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope I didn't that, throw you off there. That's okay. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about then our about our model. Mm -hmm. So let me go in and create a uh, real quick class here, because again. Model is just a class, so I'm going to create a class, and then I'm going to go ahead and call this one, let's say, uh, artist. There we go. And let's hit add. And let's go ahead and add on a couple little properties here. Um, now, if you've never used the um, the code snippets, I love code snippets in Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll notice that if I just simply type out prop, that I get the little code snippet, it sort of looks like a torn piece of paper. And then if I just hit tab, tab, it will then automatically expand that out. And so now I've got my, uh, my integer, and then we'll go ahead and call this, uh, let's just say, artist ID. Cool. And then let's go ahead and say prop, tab, tab, and let's say string, and then let's say uh, name. Cool. And then let's go ahead and say prop, and then we'll go tab, tab, and I'm going to say uh, a list of albums. There we go. And then let's go ahead and call this uh, albums, just like that. Now, one really cool thing that uh, Visual Studio will automatically do for you if you want it to is create classes. So when you hit the little drop down on this, you'll notice that I've got the little spot right there for generate class for album. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and uh, just use the uh, Visual Studio tooling, and then poof, now I've got album. Mm -hmm. So now let me go ahead, real quick, public uh, album. Oops. Uh, let's go ahead and prop, tab, tab, and let's just go ahead and call this uh, album um, ID. And then let's go ahead and say public and uh, string, and let's say title, and then get and set. And then we'll go ahead and say public. Actually, we'll do it with uh, prop again, prop tab tab. And then uh, artist. And then we'll go ahead and say artist. So the big takeaway that I want you to get all uh, out of all of that, and I know I was moving a little bit fast, and I know I was probably talking fast. I have a <laughs> tendency to do that. I, I do try to slow <laughs> things down. Um, I, I'm originally from New Jersey, um, and if you're familiar with sort of that region of, of the US, we have a propensity to talk quickly. 
I also have a propensity to say the word propensity, but that's a different <laughs> conversation. Um, but in any event, you'll notice that I moved relatively quickly here. And the reason for that is we really weren't uh, covering any new ground. All that I did was I created two brand new classes. That's it. I've created two brand new models. Voila, there we have it. So let me go ahead and just do a real quick build on this. Always a good idea to do that. And now, let me come back into my slide here. That's uh, my fault. I should have given you guys a warning on that. Um, there we go. My bad. That's uh, Emi, for those of you scoring at home. And let me just change this real quick. There we go. Perfect. All right. Um, so now, now that we've talked a little bit about uh, the fact that a model is just a class, let's talk a little bit about creating models. And the big question here is, Who's going to use the model, and really, what is a model at the end of the day? Well, a model at the end of the day is designed to be the data that the user is going to be interacting with. So let's stop and think about that for just a couple of minutes, because number one, that's going to drive your design, that you are going to build models based on how your users are expecting that model to look. And so fortunately, MVC is going to do an awful lot of work for us. That one of the big things, of course, that we don't get with MVC is that drag and drop capability. That we don't have the ability to just drag out a control, double click on it, say, hey, here's my data, and voila, I now get a cool little table. We don't get that. But that's not to say that MVC isn't going to do an awful lot for us. So when we stop to think about how we're going to interact with the data, one of the big things that we are going to need is we are going to need our input controls. So we are going to need things like drop-down lists and checkboxes and text boxes and, and all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it'd be nice if we could go ahead and have something automatically generate that for us. Well. That will actually be possible, but it's all based on how we build the model. In addition, how are we going to display everything? So for example, how are we going to make sure that we highlight something as currency and send that out the door correctly? Or how are we also going to handle validation? So for example, maybe for title, that we want to make sure that that's somewhere between 5 and 50 characters. How are we going to make sure that somebody has typed that in? Well, all of that is based on our attributes. So a model is, again, at the end of the day, just a class. That is true. Mm -hmm. But we are looking for a lot of automation here. We are looking for MVC to automatically do some stuff for us. Well, if we went back and took a look at, at our class here, and we brought back up album, or we brought back up artist, if you just simply looked at it, you wouldn't necessarily know, oh, well, title needs to be between X and Y characters. So we have to tell MVC, hey, this is how we want this to look. This is how we want this to behave. And the way that we're going to do this is based on attributes that we do need to go in and prepare our models. So the way that we're going to do this is by utilizing attributes. And what attributes do is they decorate, if you will, properties. That they add additional information to the property that the MVC runtime is going to be able to understand. So you'll notice, for example, that we're going to have the data type attribute, where we can go in and say, hey, look, this is a number, or hey, look, this is an email address. We've got display attributes. So if we want to maybe change the name that, that's going to be used to display, then we can do that with, uh, with a display attribute. And then you'll also notice that we have a whole host of different validation attributes that are available to us as well. Things like string length, regular expression, whether or not something's required, etc. So let's start off. Let's kind of dig into this a little bit. And let's talk a little bit about our uh, data types. What you're going to notice with the different attributes that are available is we can describe our data. And this is going to be helpful for both validation as well as input controls. And in particular, when it comes to HTML5. That one of the things that probably everybody that's currently watching has witnessed is on their phone, on their tablet, they go to a website, they click into a little spot for an email address, and then sure enough, on their keyboard, they automatically see down at the very bottom the little at sign and the dot com. 
That's actually based off of a brand new input control made available for HTML5 called email. Mm -hmm. Here's what's awesome about MVC is that if I tell MVC, hey, look, this is a um, this is an email address, when it goes in to create the control for me, it will automatically set that up to be an email. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful. So if you just tell MVC, hey, look, this is what's coming, it will then be able to build that up for you. So, so let's, yeah, go ahead. This is a really key point, and some of this just clicked for me actually now, <laughs> but the whole, the, the whole thing of putting this information in your class, yes, as opposed to maybe in a control or somewhere else that's more, mm. you know, by centralizing it in that, in that model class itself, it flows through a lot of different things. So it's automatically going to be presented in the views, it's validated in your controller, all this stuff. And so we're really putting that information about the data type and as you're gonna talk yep. about you know, validation and all that, we're centralizing it right down at the source of where that information is. Exactly, exactly. And that really is one of the big things that we talked about in the earlier module, is we want that separation of concerns. Because when you think about web forms, one of the things that happens quite frequently is you You've got code in multiple pages, maybe in a couple of user controls and in a couple of pages to keep displaying the exact same piece of data over and over and over again. Well, now with MVC, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add that onto the class. So that way, when I change the class, that will automatically be reflected everywhere. So let's do this. Let's actually go into uh, Visual Studio and do, 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 do. You know, there we go. Yeah, while, go ahead. While we're doing that, there have been several questions on, you know, how models relate to databases. And for instance, uh, somebody said, why can't I just drag a table in and it creates, why do I need a model class? Why can't right. I just drag that table in? And some other people saying like how, you know, what, what is the relationship? Um, so it's important to remember again, a model is a class. Yes. It is just a class. So for, for the moment, forget databases. Right. Really, all we're talking about is we've got a class and we're yep. passing it from a controller to a view. Exactly. We are going to get into databases a little bit later. We're mm -hmm. absolutely going to um, uh, to do that. But for right now, we're just focused in on how we want the data to look for the user. We will talk about databases later on. And I want to answer this real quickly only because it's in my head. And if I wait until later, I'll totally forget it. I have a great memory. It's just really short. Um, so somebody asked the question, you know, why can't you just simply drag and drop a table out and have that generate the classes? One of the things that you're going to notice is in the next module, we'll go in and highlight it, but we're doing what's known as code first entity framework. So these classes will eventually model and create our database for us uh, automatically, which is wonderful. It's a very cool little feature. The big thing that I want to mention for right now is you can absolutely use the designer for Entity Framework. So if you want that style, if you've got the database already created and you want to use that to go in and create your classes, you absolutely can do that drag and drop. Now, there's a little bit of additional work that would need to be done for the metadata attributes that I'm going to show off. But at a bare minimum, if you want to be able to do that drag and drop, you absolutely, uh, absolutely can. Uh, because again, as John mentioned, and as, as I've mentioned, at the end of the day, all that a model is, is it's a class. How that class gets created is 100% irrelevant. It, right. it, it could be created automatically by Visual Studio. It could be created by another code generator that you might be using, or you could go in and, uh, and create it. And just to add to that, you know, some people were saying, well, I like to keep my, my you know, business logic and those sort of things in a separate project. Sure. Absolutely, you can do that. In fact, you know your your model could be a it could be an, a, a web service call. Yep. Right. It yeah. Could be, so you may have a proxy class that's coming back from a web service. So yep. the point is, model is not a database; it is a class. So anything exactly. you could do anywhere you could get a class from, in in .NET. That, that's a valid model. Exactly. Yeah. To kind of go all the way back to you know our first slide there. It's it, a model is just a class. That really is it. And all that our model is going to do is it's just going to describe the data and how we're going to allow our users to uh, to interact with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back into my Visual Studio here and let me um, real quick um, add on a brand new um, class here. By the way, control dot. Now let me 
I, I always love just sneaking in um, little uh, Visual Studio tips. So I'm just going to say public and I'm going to say review. And you'll notice that when I do this, I was able to do that fast enough. Cool, cool, cool. Um, that right <laughs> here, you're going to notice that you get that little smart tag, that little blue smart tag there. Control dot will automatically open that up. I love shortcut keys. So Actually, while you're in here, as yeah. uh, people are also asking if you can show the code for the artist class at some point. Oh, um, I sure. I think it was pretty yeah. empty. Was yeah. it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I had created that one first. Okay. Yep, great. there's our little artist. And then there is our, uh, our album. Actually, you know what I really should have done? Um, Alt F12. Yeah. For the peak go. view. Yeah, if you guys <laughs> haven't seen this, this is so cool. Um, it's little things in life make me happy. Um, but there's actually the artist. And that was uh, what's known as peak. Um, and it's uh, inside Visual Studio 2013. Yeah. Alt F12 yeah, is the shortcut. Yeah, that's the ultimate key. edition. That's one of the, I, th I believe it's like, maybe it's premium. It's not in the it's, free one. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's so. one of the reasons it's worth buying one of the higher level ones. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so now, uh, for review here, I'm just going to hit control dot, and then you'll notice it'll bring up the smart tag, and I'm just going to hit enter to generate the class. We'll just mm -hmm. let it automatically set that up for us, and we'll say review, and then we'll go ahead and say um, get and set. And now, let's go into our review here. And let's just go ahead and add in a couple of real quick little properties here. Uh, review, if I can spell it correctly, ID. Uh, let's go ahead and public, and let's say album and uh, album. And uh, we'll do a get and a set there. And then let's go in and um, let's say string and um, content. There we go. And we'll go ahead and say public um, string, and I'm going to say reviewer email. There we go. Because I really just want to get to an email address. All right. So now let's um, do this real quickly. John is going to talk more about this uh, in the next module, the Visual Studio tooling. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I want to be able to demonstrate what's happening here. So I'm going to let Visual Studio set up a couple of things automatically for us, just so that way I can kind of keep going with my demos here. Right. So let me go into controllers here, and I'm just going to right click, and I'm going to say, whoops, hold on, before I do that, build. Build, build, build. There we go. Right click, add controller. And so I'm just going to, real quick, MVC5 controller with views using Entity Framework. Don't worry about anything else that it's doing here. Yep. That I'm just simply letting Visual Studio create a couple of things for me that I'm going to want. Now, I th are you doing this with Entity Framework? I thought we were doing. Um, yeah, you can if you want. I could just do it that way. Sure. Um, you know, I'm going to do it with any framework. I, the only reason I'm going to do it with any framework for right now, and you, you can go back and strip all that out later, yep. um, is just because I want to make sure that it works. And okay. I know that if I do it this way, it's going to work. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm funny like that when it comes to demos. I, 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 I want to do whatever it is that it's going to take. <laughs> yes. Make them work. Yep, yep. I'm weird that way. All right. Uh, in any event, let's go ahead and hit Add. Um, it's going to ask me, which class do you want? And let's go in and choose my uh, review class there. Um, it's going to ask me about a data context, and I'm just going to create a brand new one, um, MVC uh, Music Store Context. That's perfect. And then let me just hit Add. And again, on this screen right there, ignore that. Um, we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about it later. That's, that's not what's important right now. Uh, did you build it first? Um, I did. Um, you know what? Um, album, album, review, review. You know what I think it might be yelling about um, is I think it might be yelling about a one-to-one oh, -one relationship. Do you have a? Oh yeah. And you have a there's review my class. Review. Yeah. Yep. There's my album. There's my album. Ah. You need a review ID. You know, technically you don't, but that might be what it's complaining about. There might be one other thing that, that it's complaining about. It might just not like the the one-to-one -one relationship, um, which I run into sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, album, IT, and get. I told you, we're really cooking on this This show. is completely live. Yep, yep. <laughs> What's happening now is happening now. Um, take two. Um, add and uh, model class 
uh, review, um, and add, and add, and add. Dun, 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 okay. okay. Um, no, I know, I know exactly what it's complaining about. Sometimes it, it, it gets a little bit funny about one-to-one -one relationships. So I'm just gonna create this, um, and I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I'm gonna add in virtual there, which we technically need. I was sort of hold, hoping to add that right, in yeah. later, but let's just. The point here is he, you're yeah. building out a class structure. Distract for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you're, and, and what we're doing, a lot of the time you may be familiar with, you know, build out your database tables, and then build on top of that. What we're really doing here is more of a code first. And we'll be looking at this more um, as we're building things out, as we're building code-based models, and then we're building code off of those. Once we have the model, we're actually using scaffolding. And as Christopher mentioned a little bit, we're using scaffolding, which is going to generate views for us based on those models. Right, right? exactly. Yep. So. And we'll so, be looking at more of that scaffolding stuff in the next session as well. Exactly. And, and if we want to bring it back to my Visual Studio here, let me, let me highlight what I did to, to fix this real yep. quick. And, and only because we had the, the code first stuff kind of inject itself into this module, um, I do want to mention a couple of real quick things here. Um, one of the cool things about uh, code first entity framework is that it generally does a very good job of looking at what you've got and automatically figuring everything out. But every now and then, when it comes to many to many relationships, when it comes to one to one relationships, it's it's not necessarily expecting that because generally speaking, you're talking about one to many relationships uh, when, when you're going in and setting everything up. And that's sort of what this is built for. Mm -hmm. I do wanna highlight real quickly that you can always go in and explain everything to Entity Framework so that way it understands what it is that you're doing so that in a situation like this, if you wanted to leave it that way with that one-to-one -one relationship, you can absolutely do that. It would just take a little bit of additional work just to go in and explain to the entity first frame or code first framework what it is that you're actually trying to do. Mm -hmm. So to fix the problem, um, what I did uh, was I just went in, let me open up my album, there we go, and I just made my review a list. Mm -hmm. Now, real quick here, let me just um, draw up a, uh, a UML diagram here. Do, 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 do. There we go, and uh, there we go, and uh, there we go. By the way, the tool that we're using <laughs> to draw is a little thing called Zoom It. Yep. There we go. And let's go ahead and say album. And let's go ahead and ah. Well, that's stunk. <laughs> sure. Take two. All right. And by the way, yes, uh, they are laughing at me behind the scenes, so if you feel like doing the same, by all means, feel free. Okay, uh, review, um, there we go. And uh, so then, so there's our two little classes. And so what we've done is we've created a relationship between them where one album can have uh, multiple reviews. So that's the class design that we've created here. So what you're gonna notice is that here's our album, there's the list of reviews, so that is creating that relationship that you see right there. And then over here on review, doo -doo -doo, there we go, um, the sound effect helps. You'll notice right there is there's the other side to that relationship. Mm -hmm. So there is everything that we've now gone in and, uh, and set up. We've got a few people asking um, that, that are having a little trouble following because we've got three classes right. and following everything. Yep. What I'm thinking, hang in there, and I think what we'll do is, what I suggest is run through, do everything you're doing, and at yep. the end of this, maybe if we can take three minutes and I'll just scaffold up a, or if you want to, scaffold up an album with two properties. You know what I mean, and no other. Oh, okay, so sure. So let's actually let's just come back to this and let's let's sort of uh, simplify the 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 entire thing here. Um, Let's go in and just take a look at this. Mm -hmm. There you go. So there is our basic little album. Yep. Um, and actually here, we'll even kind of trim it down even more. There's so it's our got basic an ID little album. And one property. Exactly, and okay. that's it. And let's go ahead and let's do it this way. Uh, ooh, a, I want that and I want that. And let's go ahead and uh, for right now, I'm just gonna exclude that from the project. 
And let's also get rid of um, that, and let's also get rid of that. Okay, so now what I've done is simply undone everything I just did. Yeah. So now we're down to its barest essentials. So now we've got one class mm -hmm. with an album ID and a title. That's it. And one nice thing with scaffolding is that's okay to do, right? Yep. Because it's very quick to generate that code back again. Exactly, right. okay. exactly. So now let me go in and create um, uh, my little controller here. And let's just go in and hit add. And let's go ahead and say album. And let's go ahead and create our data context. And again, on this screen, mm -hmm. ignore this screen. Don't worry about this screen. Because we'll look at that more in the next. Exactly. We will get to this. I promise you. For right now, you can take this screen, tat them out to magic. That's it. So now we'll let it do its thing. Perfect. And again, don't worry about the code that's here. We've got a full module here. Mm -hmm. So everything else you can take tat them out to magic. I promise you we're going to explain all of this. We're going to bore you to tears as we go in and dig into all of the controllers, and we're going to talk about the entity framework. So we are going to get to all of that, I promise you. But for right now, all that I really want is I just want a very basic little uh, setup screen here. Now, the one thing I will mention about the scaffolding coming back to Visual Studio is you are going to notice that it did automatically create a controller for me. There's my little albums controller. It did automatically create a bunch of views for me. Don't worry about those. We'll get to it. I promise. All right. But for right now, let me just go in, let me launch this, and I'm just going to update my URL to be forward slash albums. And it's just going in and doing its compilation, getting everything ready for me, cleaning up. You know, it's sort of like when you invite guests over, you know, you get to run around the house real quick, throw everything into the bedroom, and then close and lock the door. Come on, we all do it. Um, in any event, now what you're going to notice here is there is my little screen. And so you'll notice that if I go in, I click Create New, I automatically have a little Create right here. Um, so I'm going to go in out of time, one of my favorite albums, um, <laughs> and then go ahead and click Create. And there's our little out of time. I'm going to click Edit. We've got a little editing screen. Let's go ahead and hit Save, and that would save all the changes back. That is what Visual Studio did for me. Visual Studio created those views automatically for me. It did a few other things for me as well. It actually went in, set up a little data context, set up a database. Again, we're going to talk about all of that. But it automatically set up that little screen for us. OK. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to do a show all. And let me bring both of those back in. And then uh, let's just do a real quick um, on my album here, uh, Control Z, Control Z, just to bring everything back and do a build. OK. So now what I just did here is I brought everything back to the way that it was a second ago. Mm -hmm. So I brought back in our artist. I brought back in our, uh, our reviews. And just to kind of draw real quickly the, actually, wait a minute. How about we do this, Christopher? I talk to myself in the third person. <laughs> if I start answering myself, that's when I know it's time to go home. Um, add new item. I, I will admit I so rarely use this, but it's awesome. Um, there we go. And let's say artist diagram. Actually, we'll say um, store diagram. Beautiful. All right. And so now. Waiting for a required operation to complete. This dialog will close when the operation completes. Duly noted. All right. Um, <laughs> album, artist, and review. And there we go. And all right. And why are you not? That's funny that it didn't automatically pick up my relationships. I will admit, I, 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 
I never used this tool. It was just the easiest way for me to go in and get that. <laughs> you know, it might have um, been from uh, with things that we hid and stuff like that. They may not have the virtuals. Yeah, that's okay. Um, in any event, um, here's what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll just gonna, I'll just draw my screen. So our album can have one or more reviews. So one album can have um, numerous views, and then our um, artist um, can have uh, numerous albums. So let's just go ahead and do that. So there's the basic little class design that we've got is we've got our little artist um, with um, uh, a name. We've got our little album. And then you'll notice that it's got a, a title. Oh, and there's my, I, I need to go back in and fix that, uh, our review. And then uh, voila, that's going to point back over to there. So that is, uh, is what we've got. That's the setup. OK. Now, album and list review. And let me just do a build. OK, good, good, good. All right, so now let's go back in controllers, add a controller, and I want one for my review. And again, on this screen, ignore this screen. Because what we're doing right here is something we're going to talk about a little bit later. I just need something that I can use for a demo. Mm -hmm. OK. So I created this for my uh, reviews. And so let me open up my reviews here. And in particular, what I want to highlight is this reviewer email down at the bottom. That's the big thing that I want to highlight for right now. Okay, And you're going to notice that this is a string. Yep. Okay. So now let's um, launch our page. And let's bring up the reviews screen here. And you'll notice that I'm going to do that by using uh, forward slash reviews. OK. You're going to notice that I'm going to do that by utilizing uh, forward slash reviews. And the nice part about um, MVC is that we'll automatically set up URLs for you. One of the things that we are going to talk about uh, a bit later um, is the fact that we can go in and change those URLs. There we go. Oh. Um, I want. So you have my. Yeah, it yelled at me for not having that, so. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. See, we're. We're live here. <laughs> On the fly. Yeah, exactly. If, if, if there was any doubt as to whether or not we were live, I'm pretty <laughs> sure we would have edited all of that out. Yeah, okay. Exactly. <laughs> Let's take this uh, one more time here. And um, reviews. There we go. Chugga, 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 chugga. So again, Is it Talk, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. So, oh, I, well, so one thing is some good questions we had coming up. Uh, can we switch to my desktop? So we had one question talking about scaffolding and how we can customize that. I'm going to talk more about uh, Visual Studio in the next session. But on the ASP.NET site, all this information we're talking about, if you go to the ASP.NET site and search, you're going to find all this uh, stuff. So scaffolding in, in Visual Studio 2013 is completely extensible, and it works across everything. So it works in MVC, but also works in web forums, web API, et cetera. I've had some other questions about more advanced topics. And so people are asking, you know, can we use repository? Or are you going to talk about the repository pattern? Or are you going to talk about more in-depth content? And we really are focusing at the more introductory level today. But uh, we just did a more advanced uh, exam preparation level uh, MVA last September. And so if you search for developing ASP.NET MVC for web applications, um, or it's, it's just on MicrosoftVirtualAcademy.com, in that one we went into more uh, detail and we talked about some of these things like repository patterns, et cetera. And, and again, remember, um, the whole point is that we're, you know, a class is any it's just a class. So we had a question on, can I use Oracle? Can I use whatever? Any way you can get dot, you know, any way .NET can talk to your database, your web service, whatever, as long as it returns a class, that is a valid model. 
So, you know, Entity Framework will work with, with Oracle, but you can also just have, um, you know, if you've got your own .NET code that is interfacing with your backend database, if you have, you know, your architecture group or somebody is giving you some data logic classes that you're supposed to use to get your data, that's fine, as long as you've got a, a model class back. Is that good? Are you, uh, do you want me to, do you want me to hack? Uh, I'm gonna throw up a very simple one. Does that sound good? Uh, do you need a little bit more? I'm gonna do super, super basic. Let's let's uh, look on my desktop. I'm gonna go in, uh, I've got this this one that I'd done previously. I'm gonna create a, uh, just not, not to distract and, and not to confuse, I'm gonna create a separate model class that is a, uh, a person. Or do you wanna go back to yours? Um, yeah, let's come back to mine. Okay. Um, only just because I'm, one of the things I'm, I, I just want to try and avoid sure. um, is, there we go. Um, go for right. it. Okay, okay. So I'm going to create a, uh, I'll create an album class, and it's going to have two things in it. So I'm going to do add class, and it's going to have, I'm going to call it album. And my album is going to have just an ID and a title. Uh, so album ID, and then I'll uh, add on a title to it. So I'll say prop string title. And an important thing to do here is to build. So I'm, I'm hitting control shift B, but you can also do build and build solution. And, and part of the reason for that is that the scaffolding stuff that, that we're showing you, that is actually done by uh, it's using reflection and it's looking at your assemblies in order to do this. So now I'm going to say add controller and I'm going to start at the super basic level with just an MVC5 controller with read write actions. So I'm not easy, even using Entity Framework. We'll talk more about Entity Framework in a bit um, and that's how we're getting data. The Entity Framework is our kind of database layer. I'm just going to create a simple empty one. I'm going to call this a, uh, an album controller. All right, so uh, if on my index, it's returning a simple view. And if I look at my album, uh, I don't have anything there. So let's make a details view, and it's going to return an album. So I'm going to say var album equ equals new album. And I'm hitting control dot. So control dot brings up this thing and I'm bringing in a using to bring in that namespace so that I can create that album. So now I'm gonna say an album and I've got an album ID. So we'll give this an album ID of um, the ID that was passed in and we'll give it a title equals, um, you know, hello. Right? And so that is a very simple class. All I've done, I've created ID equals, right? So here, let me zoom out because I'm bouncing around all over the place here. So I've just created a simple class and I'm going to return it. So I say return view and I'm going to say album, right? A, uh, if I could spell. Okay, so there's no database involved. I've just got a very simple class and I'm returning that class. I've populated it, I'm returning it to the view. Now I'm going to say add view. Okay, so this is a details view. The template here, I'm going to use the details template. And my model class is an album. And I don't have any data context, so we're just gonna leave that off. And then I'm gonna say okay. So scaffolding is the process, and we'll look at this more in the Visual Studio section next, of creating code from a model class. So now, because we have these two properties on my model, right, so I've got a model title and a model ID, and so it's just gonna show those both. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> it's not showing the ID, and that's actually Visual Studio being smart for us. Part of the intelligence in the scaffolding is saying you probably aren't actually wanting your users to see your IDs. That's information for you only, right? And so uh, it, you can expose that if you want. I could go and type in ID, but normally it's going to hide IDs for you, all right? So now if I run this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run the application, and 
this is the details view, and I'm getting an error, and I expected this error, actually, because my, my control here, my controller, wants an ID, okay? So this is important. Uh, MVC is you're controlling, you're just, the user's URL is calling into a method. And if you call a method, here's my details method, that expects a parameter, and that parameter is not there, then you're going to get an error. So let's pass that in. So I'm going to, I'm going to scroll to the top, and I'll say details. We'll give this ID of 5. Okay. So now it said hello. All right. And why did it say hello? Well, that's, that's what the model told it. So that is the model value. Do you want to hop back over to you? Yeah, let's. Okay. Go, yeah, let's. I, and 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 I apologize. I I, I really wish I, I knew exactly what had gone sideways there. Um, but it really was. It just sort of snowballed. That one thing went wrong, and then Visual Studio basically just decided, ah, hey, you know what? We're just going to mess with you today, Christopher, um, <laughs> and and make it look like you've never done this before. Better you than me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always nice to have a demo just completely blow up on you in front of a thousand of your closest friends. Yeah, we got that uh, yeah, out of the way earlier. Exactly, nice. yes. Done and done. Okay. In any event, um, so let's bring it back to um, our little screen here. So here's what I was trying to build towards, and, and hopefully this is going to bring everything uh, together. And, and just to review, what we were trying to do here is really highlight this little email address right there. This is the big thing that we're trying to talk about. Now, what I did is I let Visual Studio go in and create the scaffolds for us, and it automatically generated um, this little setup for me. And you'll notice that if I go in and I click on Create New, that right down here is our reviewer email. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is Alt V C, Alt V C, View Source. Mm -hmm. And I want to highlight on the source here. Let me just go in and bring it up to the largest. And let's scroll down and let's go find that reviewer email. And you'll notice right here, here's our um, little input field. And what I want you to notice is that the type right here is text. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's text. Now, the reason that it's text is because what's happening is Visual Studio, or I'm sorry, MVC is looking at reviewer email and it's going, oh, it's text. We must need a text box. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. So that's what it's displaying because it doesn't know any better. Well, now what I want to do is I want to tell it, hey, look, this is really data type and a little control dot. We need the annotations. And I'm going to say data type email. Now, this is a point that John had made a little while ago which was, hey, we're going to put all of this onto the class. We're going to centralize this right here. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the only change that I'm going to make. Okay? I, 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 I've got nothing up my sleeves except for my arms and, you know, a funky little blue pattern. Um, <laughs> but other than that, there's nothing else going on. I didn't make any other changes. I didn't update any code, nothing else. So here's all I'm going to do. I'm going to, and you can watch, build solution. That's it. And then I'm going to bring back up my little browser right over here, and I'm just going to hit refresh. Now give it a couple of seconds, because it's got to do its thing behind the scenes. And then what you're going to notice, once this puts the page together, puts my database together, when I hit view source again, and let's go in text size largest, let's go ahead and scroll on down, and now you're going to notice when I find the reviewer email, one more time here, now you're going to notice there it is, and it's now type equals email, just like that. Now, what does that do for us? Well, here's what that does for us. Let me tap into reviewer email, and let me bring up my keyboard. And what I want you to notice, and the zoom in isn't going to quite work there, um, but what you'll notice right down here at the very bottom is now my at sign and the dot com. And that is 100% because of the email. So you'll notice when I click in contents, not there. Yep. I go back into there, and you'll notice there it is. That's pretty cool.
It's That's pretty cool. slick. Yep. yep. And this is again about the model. The model understands it has one job. Exactly. I, I love those, you know, there's people joke about that you'll see pictures, you had one job. The model has one <laughs> job, and that is to understand but and to represent job. data, right? Yes. Exactly. So all it does is it says, I, I have these four things I have an email address, I have an integer ID, I have whatever. And all it does is say, here's what I hold. Yep. But because it does that, it's all centralized and then. Other things can take advantage of that information. The controller can understand and say, oh, you wanted an integer ID? You don't have it, boom. Yep. Or the view can say, oh, this is an email? Great, I'm going to do something magic using HTML. And that's you know? exactly it. Yep. So if we bring it back to, um, uh, to my slides here, there's actually a couple of other things that we can do. So for example, we can, if we want, display a better name. So rather than having reviewer email, we could actually update that to be just email. And you'll even notice that going beyond that, we can also set up whatever formatting it is that we might want. So if you want your dates to display in a particular way, if you want numbers to display in a particular way, that you have the ability to go in and set up your own format strings as well. Now, if you're anything like me, and I know I am, I never, <laughs> It's true. Um, I never remember what all the different format strings are that are available. If you take a look on the slide, uh, right there is the uh, URL. If you look at the Q&A, that will explain everything that you can possibly do with uh, display formats. Now, I'm going to kick back to Visual Studio here. I'm going to just kind of keep on rocking with my, uh, with my demos now that I've got all of this uh, working. <laughs> Yay! Um, so now, let's um, uh, come back to Visual Studio. And I'm just going to add in one little thing. I'm just going to say display, and then I'm going to say name equals, and let's just say email, or email address. There we go. And one more time, we'll just hit build and build. And one more time, we'll bring up Visual Studio, and we'll just simply hit refresh. Now again, this is going to take a couple of seconds while it goes through all of its different machinations and all that good stuff, chugga, 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 chugga. And now what you're going to notice is that it's email address. So again, I made one change mm -hmm. and that was it. And now this is reflected everywhere. Yep. Now coming back to, uh, to my slides here, let me do, 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 there we go. Let me close everything off by talking a bit about validation that one of the biggest concerns that we have is making sure that our users are not punching in bad values. Now, it might be simply because they fat fingered something, but it also might be because they're trying to do harm to our system. So one big thing that I always like to stress about doing validation is you always wanna look for the valid values because the list of valid values is infinitely shorter than the list of invalid values. And so as a result, we want to focus in on just what's valid. Because if it's not valid, who cares about anything else? It's not valid. So what you want to look for when you're setting up your validation is things that are not, or things that are valid. If it's not valid, it's not good. So just simply look for valid values. If it's anything outside that scope, it must be bad, kill it. And so you'll notice that we get a lot of different uh, capabilities to go in and handle this. That you'll notice that we've got the ability to do things like marking something as required, setting up string length, and when all else fails, you also have regular expressions as well. So let's go back in here real quick uh, to Visual Studio. And do, 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 do. what I'm going to do, did it come up? Oh, okay, I know why. Give me one second. Do, 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 do. Where's my mouse? Can we switch over to my, or is it going to be a little uh, bit? Yeah, no, okay, no. you're good. Yeah, okay. stick with me. All right. Yep. Actually, we're coming I, up on a break. Yeah. I understand what you're trying to do there. I've got it now. <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, I have, in fact, done this before. <laughs> no. <laughs> I believe in you. Okay. Um, but in any event, now let me go in and say, for example, on a reviewer email, let me go in and make this required. That's it. Boom. Done. Required. And yeah. so now I'm going to go in, I'm going to do a build, chugga, 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 chugga. And now let's come back over here to Internet Explorer. Once again, with the refresh, once again, it's going to go in, set everything up for me, chugga, 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 chugga. The sound effects help. 
<laughs> they actually do speed it up. Uh, let me see. <sighs> I love you. <laughs> I so love you. Could you. Do um, I, I, I did that. Okay. You know what? Let's do this. Um, yep. Let's go ahead and take a break um, because we're a little bit over as it is. Yep. So let's take ten. Let's come back. I'm going to go in and I'm going to get this thing fixed up for real this time, yep. and we'll uh, we'll rock and roll from uh, from there. So. And we also had we've had some questions about where we can get the code, and we'll push that code up to our GitHub repository as soon as that's done. Up. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Let's let's make sure it's working code. And in fairness to what Christopher is doing, he's changing the model types as he goes. The database is created, and so it, there's this. We'll talk more about this later, but there's this system of migration where it's keeping things up to date. Changing your models as the database right. changes, the two of them can get out of sync. Exactly. So this is actually pretty standard, and you just need to, to update them. Yep. But, so we'll do that for you during the break. Exactly. Catch yep. you in 10. We'll get back to you in 10.